Fairy Folk Festival was first held in 1977, and since then it's grown into one of Australia's major music festivals, attracting visitors and performers from all over the world. The success of the festival is due to its location, being held in the idyllic historical seaside town of Port Ferry, plus the community involvement and the willingness of hundreds of people who are prepared to volunteer their time and expertise during the organisation and running of the event. So why did you decide to, uh, to start it here in, in Port Ferry? It was an obvious choice, it had the traditional feel. We, were, we felt was right because our brief at the start was uh, Irish and Australian music, folk music, and uh, the seafaring stuff was a perfect match. You know, the first posters had sea pictures of boats on it. I'm, I'm proud of the fact that it's still going, you know, and excited by it. Actually, having come in this afternoon, first uh, day of the 41st festival, and the place is buzzing, you know, the cockatoos are already carrying on, they, they've learned all the tunes over the years. And uh, it's just got an incredible feel about the place. I mean, it's just, uh, that's to me what a festival's always been. It's always that sort of reach out for, what, what, let's make some fun, let's have some fun, let's do something that's going to be a bit more exciting than the day to day grind. The roots concept of folk music, you know, really refers to where did you grow from? You know, we grew out of the, literally out of the Port Ferry soil and built by Port Ferry people overall, particularly as the festival got bigger and literally is built now by an army of volunteers who become passionate about it, you know, it's not, to them it's, they love the music, but they love the camaraderie, they love the achievement of building a huge festival every year, uh, literally creating a town of what, 15,000 plus in a town that's normally only, nearly 3,000, which is just mind boggling. My main responsibility is to look after the volunteer construction crew. We've got 140 volunteers on the list and on the first day we had 116 in the gate. We have a two week build, um, set outs on the Friday prior to the event. It's generally packed up by the Thursday night after the event. I'm an outsider that's come over from Adelaide for the last 14 years for the camaraderie of the volunteers to help get this thing on the road for the construction crew. Fantastic guys to work with, and it's a really proud thing to be here at the end of it and see it all completed. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a giant Scotsman, and uh, Rich. I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I'm Oki. Yesterday, when we got here, I was driving through Port Ferry, there's just a surge of warmth comes through you. It was just, it's wonderful. I love it. I've noticed that the audience are getting younger, which is really important because uh, if they were all get, staying the same age, you know, then they'd, we'd, they'd be dying off. So, no, it's, it's great. It's, uh, uh, and the music reflects that. I yeah. think the music is changing. It's been traditionally folky, and now it's getting a little bit more world music. There's different tents for different people, places where you can have a dance, people, places where you can sit and just watch, watch the concert. Something for younger people, something for older people. It's, it's a lovely mix. We're Belfast bound again. Again. The community benefits so much from the Folk Festival. Financially, there's all the various sporting clubs. The committee are so generous with the, the funds that they raise for the festival, pumping it back into the hospital, the schools. The schools have got accommodation, they've got sausage chisels down there. So it's a really community-driven event. So all the volunteers, um, yeah, as I said, the different sporting groups are all, they're all there helping run the festival, but then in turn, the clubs benefit from that. It's so good to be back in Belfast. Feels a little bit like Thunderbolt. Something's coming round there. Can you tell us about your first ever visit to Port Ferry? Mm. I think it was in 1996. We played it. We came Fid in and we played at Fiddler's Green in town. I remember that much. Yeah. Railway stage. The, yeah. The wine bar. What was that wine yeah, bar? Yeah, we did the wine bar. We had the wine bar pumping, and and in those days, I actually had a camera that I'd take on stage to take photos of our the biggest crowds we'd ever played to, and I was still got all the pictures. 
What always st struck me about this festival was just the other music that was going on and just getting to walk around till all hours of the morning, listening to incredible music. Um, that, that's what I love about every festival actually, and Port Ferry's right up there. I look after the friends of the festival who are the volunteers who help run the festival from gates, venues, ticketing, looking after performers, making cups of tea for people. I have uh, 250 volunteers on my list but I do get involved in the community volunteers which would be another 200. The organisation has benefited from the Port Ferry Folk Festival in a, a number of ways and the, the biggest and most single uh, contribution has been in the form of uh, a $750,000 donation towards the new community health building. Port Ferry Folk Festival have also made a generous donation towards the community health bus which uh, we uh, operate on a day-to-day -day basis to transport clientele to and from our uh, new building and uh, we also have uh, used the bus for community outings and also for uh, some of the community groups that are out there that need um, some assistance with transport. It's really terrific that this is the first year I've had the chance to join the volunteer construction crew for the Port Ferry Folk Festival. It's great camaraderie, it's a great way to work together to make a real difference to not only the Folk Festival but to the community and the spirit here in Port Ferry. Fantastic to be a part, I take my hat off to all those involved in the construction crew, volunteerism and that's what makes the Port Ferry Festival such a terrific place and makes Port Ferry a great place to live. There are many positive aspects of the Port Ferry Folk Festival. From the community working together, strengthening relationships and building community pride, to major economic benefits for community groups and businesses. But I think the biggest economic benefit to the community and district is the publicity and promotion of Port Ferry. It has helped make Port Ferry a sought after destination year round, and this helps keep our local businesses in a healthy economic state and ultimately provides jobs for local people. The uh, Folk Festival have uh, supported our club over many years, helped us purchase a lot of our equipment, and lately have just given us $80,000 towards our building extension. So thank you, Folk Festival. My name's Colin Cleary, I'm from the Port Ferry IGA. I've been here for 18 years and I'd just like to say uh, in those 18 years, um, the Port Ferry Folk Festival has grown and grown and it's just a tremendous boost for all the businesses in town, uh, all the accommodation places and anyone that's got anything to do with Port Ferry. Can you remember what your first thoughts about the festival itself were when you arrived? I, I remember uh, I, there was some kind of... I just saw the kids playing music in the street with such bravery. You know, it took me till I was 22 before I could play in the street, or at least 18, 19, you know. And these kids are seven playing and... and I was so encouraged that they got all my money out of my pocket. Everybody that I, I saw, all these kids playing music, 
I think that what's wonderful for me is, is seeing this sort of family atmosphere and everybody feels safe and music is sort of inclusive and inviting. Last year's economic impact statement estimated that 9.8 million was returned to the local community over the festival weekend. Some of the organisations we've donated to are Moyne Health Services, the Surf Club, and other smaller ones such as the Golf Club and the Port Ferry Warnable Rail Trail, which is a community program that the committee is happy to assist. You are the first one. You are the last one. Video killed the radio star. Video killed the radio When I first came to Port Ferry, I did the folky thing and I was just playing acoustic guitar, I just done an acoustic record. So that was great, I did that. And then subsequently I did it with my blues band as an electric guitar player. Then I brought my mandolin trio and did that. So I've done it, I've, and that, that was all the while I would go and join Ricky, you know, in those early days of the sing out. I have always found the folk festival to be completely inspiring. I don't come from the school of thought of that bigger is better. I don't think it needs to grow. I think it needs to continually achieve outstanding musical programming, wonderful audiences, and maintain that integrity. And that's what is unique about this. You wouldn't want it to go. It can't get any bigger. And even if it could, I don't think you'd really want it to, because then you take away that beautiful, intimate experience of artist and audience together. Portree Folk Festival's been running now for 41 years and we have uh, a very strong community-based event. We're lucky that we have a very strong volunteer committee and this year we uh, were rewarded with uh, an award from the Victorian Government and it just goes to show that um, a little town like Port Ferry can put on what we believe to be one of the greatest events here in Australia. People are here for music, but it's like an, almost like an extended family where people come, they forget their everyday worries, they set up their tents, they look at the program, decide what are we going to hear, what are we going to see, meet people, old friends, and it's a lovely atmosphere and I still think it has that. Even though it's a bigger event, it's an internationally renowned event, but it's still a community festival. The volunteers are proud of what they do. The people that sit on the doors, that monitor the the comings and goings, that they empty the rubbish bins, that um, check your tickets. They're proud of this event. And look at the town, it's beautiful, it's thriving, and this festival is, is part of all of that. It's been a very successful festival. Pack-up started yesterday at the end of the sessions. We'll finish later this week, we'll pack everything up, take it back to the storage sheds by the end of Friday, maybe sooner hopefully and uh, then we'll sit down and have a rest and look forward to next year's festival.